Okay, to continue part two, we're going to talk about state transfer taxes at closing. Whenever we record a new deed or a mortgage, we have to pay the state some uh, stamp taxes. And on the deed, it is uh, 70 cents for every $100 you put down on the sales price. And on the uh, mortgage uh, note, it is 35 cents for every $100. And then on the mortgage document itself, we don't um, have a per increment on $100. We just multiply the total amount by 0 0.002 for every dollar. This came back from way, way back. You actually went down to the government office and bought a stamp tax uh, stamp. And this is an example of a deed where you actually put the stamp tax, uh, the stamps on it. So let's work out state do uh, documentary stamp tax on the deeds first of all. You pay 70 cents for every hundred dollars, must be rounded up to the whole number. So for example, home price 171,200. You get that, you divide it by 100 and then multiply it by 0.7. Let's suppose though the home price was 171,225. Uh, when you divide that out, it won't be a whole number, so therefore you'll have to round it up. Therefore, go from 1,012.25 up to 1,713. And don't make that mistake of not rounding it up, because you'll get a, another answer a little bit smaller than it needs to be. And there's an exa another example there of a home price of... 295,995 you round it up to 2960 and multiply that by 0 0.7 and it, this will go as a cost to uh, the uh, seller and usually goes on the seller side on page two the buyer has got nothing to do with it it's not a proration it's just a pure uh, transaction cost to the seller and needs to be done before the seller can sell the home we have also promissory notes, the IOU. Remember, a mortgage comes in two pieces, the note and the mortgage document. On the note amount, on all notes, you pay 35 cents per 100. Here's an example. The question says what the home price is, doesn't tell us what the mortgage amount is, so therefore what we will do is we will work out the mortgage amount first of all. Multiply by 80% comes to 300,000. Then we'll do the division by a 100. And that comes out to a whole number, therefore we just multiply that by 0.35 and we come to the stamp tax on the note. And another example here of a home price uh, 90,000 with an assessed mortgage, uh, assumed mortgage of 55,000, therefore uh, a new mortgage of 25,000. So what we will do in that particular case, we'll work it out twice. First of all, the amount on the first uh, assumed mortgage and the second on the new mortgage. The total therefore will be 280. Then we come to the intangible tax on new mortgages. This is only for new mortgages. It's not on the mortgage document that comes with an assumed mortgage because it's already been recorded and paid. We don't want to do it again. Not assumed ones. And this is just a straight figure multiplying it out by 0 0.002. In this particular case, the home price is 179,950 and the mortgage is 154. Calculate this total stamp taxes due. Well, in this particular case, we work out the deed first of all. Then we do the, uh, as, uh, the assumed mortgage, big one, the new mortgage tax. And then we do the regular 0.35 one, but we have to round up. And once again, those will go on page two. In this particular case, the uh, mortgage taxes would be on the buyer's side, the note tax and the mortgage tax, and the deed stamp would be on the seller side. And then at the end of the day, what we'll do on this page, on the closing statement, we'll add up all the totals. 
uh, this is what the buyer has to come up with at closing. Uh, beg your pardon. Uh, this is a total of the buyer's costs, rather. And this is a total of the seller's costs, including the commission, remember. And then what we do, we transfer that over to page 3. And here you can see the page 2 costs are here, 5,000, and down here at 13,000. Now we finish the closing statement, we actually then add up all of these totals and negatives and pluses to come up with a final figure of what the buyer has got to come to the closing table with and what the seller is going to walk away with. We'll explain that in class a lot clearer. This is just an example I've done where the home price is 2.5 million, first mortgage is 55% of the price, and we assume a second mortgage of 250. What are the total stamp taxes due on the transaction? It's quite possible you get a question like this. So you have to pay tax on the deed, and then we have to pay tax on the first mortgage of 55% of that price, um, and then also the intangible tax, and then on the assumed mortgage, we will just have to pay the stamp tax on the note, not on the mortgage itself. And I'm not going to go through it, but here is the answer how we did it. All right. We got some examples of, for instance, how would we enter the purchase price on the CD? Well, we know. If you remember right from the very beginning, it's got to come out of the buyer's pocket into the seller's pocket. So therefore, it's going to be debit the seller, a credit the seller, debit the buyer. They mix these up. It doesn't really matter which one comes first. It makes sense. It's got to come out of someone's pocket before it goes into someone's pocket. But um, that's the way they do it. Earnest money. A lot of people get confused with that. The earnest money has got to come into the transaction first of all, so that's only going to go into the buyer's pocket, so it's just credit the buyer. And the same with the uh, mortgage amount as well. Unpaid property taxes. We know that that's a proration, so it's going to come out of one into the other. Credit the buyer, debit the seller. Agent commission. That's a cost to usually the seller, and uh, the buyer doesn't care about that purely a deal between the seller and the broker, so it's going to come out of the seller side, debit the seller only, as a cost. Loan origination fees, that's going to come out of the buyer's pocket, from the lender, or rather to the lender, but we don't put that, the lender isn't part of this, but it's going to be a cost that is going to go outside the transaction to the lender. So we debit the buyer. Seller's mortgage payoff. Maybe the seller still has an outstanding mortgage. So it's going to go outside of the transaction, but it's got to come out of the seller's pocket. So that's actually going to be on page three because it's part of the transaction. He can't sell that house until he pays it off. Debit the seller. Prepaid HOA fees. That's a, that's a proration, but it's been paid for already by the seller for the whole year. Therefore, the seller needs to receive a little bit of credit from the buyer. So what we have is they debit the buyer, credit the seller, page three. New mortgage, it's like earnest money. It's got to go into the buyer's pocket. So let's fill it up first, credit the buyer. Assume mortgage. Assume mortgage. That means that the seller is basically handing over the remaining mortgage to the buyer. And that for, therefore, it's got to come off his amount because he's not going to receive that mortgage um, payment and put oh, the mortgage um, total and give it over to the buyer. So therefore, it's debit the seller, credit the buyer. That's a tricky one. Paid property taxes. Sometimes the home is sold in the middle of December and the tax has already been paid. So therefore, that means that the seller has paid for all of the year but isn't living in the property for the year. The buyer's going to have to pay off a month or so. So therefore, out of the buyer into the seller pocket. Unpaid interest on the assumed loan. The seller is going to be living in the house for half a month, not pay any interest on the time he's lived in it for that month. The buyer is going to be paying the full mortgage payment. Therefore, it's only fair that the seller contribute a little bit of the interest owed to the buyer. Credit the buyer, debit the seller. Mortgage points. This is simple lender's charge just like loan origination fees. 
so it's just going to come out of the buyer's pocket and we've got a few others here as well sorry I missed that one up sellers concession to buyers costs in other words the sellers going to hand over some of the money that they're receiving from the purchase back to the buyer to pay for some of the buyers costs so therefore it's going to come out of the seller into the buyer and that's I think the end of it I'm not going to go through the examples here we've done that in class and uh, that's the end of chapter 14. So thanks very much indeed for listening and we'll see you next time.